lab coat agents. That was like way sooner than five. So sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to another webinar. And this one is, is pretty amazing. We have a, a lot of people on the webinar side of this. This is specifically on the secrets of tapping into Facebook seller leads and, and really the algorithm of how it all works with Facebook. So these two guys, they work for Street Text. Uh, they're good friends of mine. And Marcus, I don't know where the hell you're in, but it's super awesome. I love your, uh, your cubicle, your, what is that, dude? This is a utility trailer that my wife converted into a podcast station. So she has a show called The Real Deal. And um, there it is. I'm now taking it over because we're in between homes. So this is uh, my current office. I love it. I love it. And Logan, where are you at, man? I just uh, locked in my basement here. Um, you know, boring old basement, Kelowna, British Columbia. Uh, Marcus moved to the island. We're all still here. Some of us working from the office, but yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm staying home. It's, uh, it's, it's nice and cozy here. Uh, it looks like a really nice basement. Do you have cucumbers in front of you? I do, bud. Oh, good job. <laughs> alkalizing. Yeah. You're alkalizing. Uh, look, I'm, uh, I'm learning from Marcus because Marcus is like, what? A cookie? Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> nope, not gonna happen. I'm like, damn it. Come on, Marcus, just one cookie. I just got black coffee. That's what I drink until Dude, about. dude, look at this. I'm becoming about Marcus. About five o'clock. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's when our right. offices were next to each other, anytime I'd open a granola bar or anything that's less than perfectly healthy, I'd hear about it through the wall. My start getting, you know, bangs on my wall. Like, what are you eating in there? Yeah. Chris, uh, that's, yeah. that's oh, exactly. Wow. Dude, I, I love that. Well, let's that's get right into it. That's a trainer. Yeah, I used to be a personal trainer, so. There you go. So follow, follow him on, on Facebook, which we'll go talk into uh, right now. But uh, guys, Marcus and Logan are from Street Text. Check out Street Text, streettext.com. We are going to talk about that right in the middle of it. Uh, but guys, let's get right into this and talk about really the algorithm. What makes you guys experts on this first? That's what I want to know. And then let's go and show us all the good stuff. Logan, I'll let you take this one. Sure. I mean, um, over the years, we've discovered so many little things when you add them all together, creates this process that just works. And, and the one most important thing I, I like to lead with is our understanding of how Facebook is, is starting off to A, choose how much they're going to charge you, cost per click, mm -hmm. and also who is your preferred audience type moving forward. It used to be back, at, you know, even as, as early as last year, you used to be able to go in there and basically say, I'm looking for a guy named John Smith who drives red Lamborghini on Sundays, right? You can't do that anymore. You can't select age, race, sex, religion. You can't, you can't select so many of these things that are, are valuable and important. But what we can do is we can build an ad that we are familiar with, that we know is likely to work. So the, the testing is done. What's left to test is who Facebook starts showing the ad to. And that's a variable that's outside of our control now. So what we've discovered that works really well is building multiple ads. What seems to work best for us is three. Build three perfectly identical ads. Let them run against one another within your, your, your preferred area for 24 hours. As soon as that ad has reached its first 500 people, which we've decided or, or we've determined is that, that first test audience, However, that, that group of individuals, very random group of individuals, however they reacted to the ad, sets what I call the predictive um, uh, relevancy, right? It's potential relevancy. Facebook, let's say you drop your targeting pin in the center of wherever, and you've got potentially 100,000 people targeted. Facebook needs to decide how relevant is it, is it going to be to everybody in this audience. So once again, they put it out basically at random the first 500 people. However, they react is how Facebook feels the rest of the audience will then react to it. So if in that first 500, the, 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 those individuals don't react as favorably as we'd like, Facebook says, okay, this isn't a good ad. You're going to pay three bucks, five bucks, eight bucks cost per click. Right. So if you run those three ads, you have a higher likelihood of that finding a better first 500, which then allows you to run with that one ad. So if you run three identical ads for 24 hours, you will see quite a variance in terms of results. You pick which one works best, pause the other two and you're, you're running forward. So in terms of the ad metrics, that is, I think, the most important thing. You can you can see that real time right away, but also lead quality is incredibly important. And if within your first 500, you're getting clicks, 
but it's the type of profiles, the type of individuals who are likely to, you know, leave an address only, click on your ad and leave no information, tell you, hey, I didn't leave my information at all. Well, it doesn't matter how cheap those leads are. We don't want them, right? So if that's what's happening within your first 500, Facebook then has made up their mind as to this is the type of individual that I've shown the ad to and is likely to click. So what's going to happen? I'm just going to keep finding that same type of audience for you. And that's, we, basically, I look at it as if you're snowballing down the wrong hill. So, and it happens really quick. So a lot of people we find, find want to test things for weeks or months at a time. You don't need to do that, especially if you're setting your own benchmarks, right? So if I run one ad now, I have no idea whether it's good or not. If I'm running multiple ads at the same time, I can compare results and then start to identify what my cost per click my cost per lead, my cost per email and phone number submissions, the, the lead flow as well as quality that I can expect on a good ad in my area. I then lock that in as what we call our anchor ad. That's now the, the, the numbers to beat, right? If you run another ad and you run it for 24 hours and you can see initial results being better than your anchor ad, great. That's your new ad. Run that one and pause the other thing, right? And we all have, um, or every single person that joins Street Text will be assigned their own coach. And these are the things that we really look for and we can identify immediately as to where we expect things to be heading. Because if you're in an area in Santa Barbara or, or Malibu, wherever, compared to, you know, the, the, the middle of Michigan or Missouri or whatever, your results are expected to be considerably different, right? So we, as a, as a, as a team, I guess I would say, work with everybody all across North America and have really started to identify what that, that pathway to ROI should be. And we can kind of, you know, divulge that information one-on-one -on -one with everybody and let them know what our expectations are. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, oh, Marcus, I'm sorry. You were going to say something. Go ahead. Shoot. No, I was going to say the, the, the beauty behind this is that the stats don't lie. We have 12,500 people currently as, as of this last month produce on average anywhere from six to seven out of every 10 clicks become a submission. I don't think there's anything out there that can even touch those numbers. So that, that's, that's crucial because if you're getting any sort of clicks, you're getting leads with these type of ads. Now with that, on average, you're getting about a $2 address, $6 email, $18 phone number. Now I can go show you right now an example of someone getting like 30 cent emails. So the averages are only averages because you're not split testing properly. Okay. And some people who's initially set up their ad and they never get in touch with their coach and they just think they know it all go and, and run the ads improperly, which distorts our averages. So if you want to beat your averages and get your cost per lead as low as possible, you work with us and we show you how to do it. And, and then it becomes fun because now we just talk about the conversion side of this, which is everything to do with the way you make that person feel, the experience you provide and, and leveraging video integrations. All right, so quick question here, and then I'll, I'll go into one great question that was asked. This question is for me. Does this work outside of uh, Canada and the U.S.? Because we've got some people from um, Europe here yep. watching. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was working with an individual in Morocco the other day. Um, basically, anywhere that there is Facebook, we can work. Now, obviously, that's going to throw in a few wrenches and curveballs because it, it starts to depend on what your local currency is. Got it. And we had people in, in, um, in South Africa who are doing this and doing very well. And um, they're on, I believe, the RAND. So when we're setting your cost per click, it's at $9 per day US, which okay. is not appropriate values. So there are some variables there that we would obviously want to discuss with them and, and make sure things are tied up and, and um, set up in the right way. But absolutely, so long as there is Facebook in your area, not a problem. Cool. We've got people from the Philippines. Uh, Portugal, Spain, Germany, France, UK, and uh, a few other ones, Mexico, and, and some South America. I just lost them. And then somebody says they love my Goonies shirt, dude. Come on. I actually, I meant to say that to you earlier. I, I Marcus interrupted with the cucumber comment, but uh, Goonies shirt is, that's awesome. I love it. And then Marcus, Marcus has got a street, dude, I still don't have a street text t-shirt. Yeah, Steve, no. Don, if you're listening, make that happen. Actually, awesome. spend more than a T-shirt. Let's get some swag, let's get some hats, some sweat. Shirt, I love it. Cool thing. So, guys, let's let's get right into the really, really good stuff, and that's what Logan was saying when he wanted to compare. Because I have a question on this by Joe. He says, "Well, what do these ads look like? Are they identical with no variances, different headlines, different pictures? I, I want to see this stuff because if you're telling me to run three different ads." 
uh, and this is how we can figure out the algorithm of which one's going to work better. I want to see it. Show me. Yeah, show me that. And I'll quickly explain my, my thoughts on this because I'm a, big, I'm a big believer in the scientific method. And the only way for the scientific method to work properly is to control as much of the variable as possible. We want to have as much control and then leave one variable. What's the one thing when you build a Facebook ad that we can't control? It's what Facebook is determining as to who is your ideal audience. Who's going to click? Where are we going to start showing and testing this ad? We can draw a 15 mile radius. Great. Right. You, you can, you can create, you can control the ad copy. You can control the creative. You can control everything on this side. The one thing we can't control is what Facebook's going to do with it. So in order to truly use the scientific method, you build those three ads that have nothing different at all three perfectly identical ads, the same ad copy, imagery, everything. Then you allow Facebook to sprinkle that out, ad out there, right? And once again, each ad will test its own unique 500 people. Now, I use a bunch of really silly analogies. Um, this one here makes a lot of sense to me. You know, forgive me if you don't like this, but here's an idea. Let's pretend <clears throat> your job here is to sell hula hoops at a festival, okay? Now, you have 100,000 people at the festival. You know that, you know, Hula hoops are going to go over fairly well here. At least they should. Now you're in a helicopter, 100 feet above. You've got three green hula hoops. They're perfectly identical hula hoops. You drop them out of a helicopter, what's going to happen? Are they all going to fall down and hit one column, the same column of people? No. They, as you let them go, they're going to spread out and each encircle different people. Let's say each hula hoop encircles three people, right? So you have three hula hoops, each encircling three different groups of people. That makes sense, right? Now, if one of your groups, let's say they love hula hoops, but they hate green hula hoops. All three people hate green hula hoops. Facebook's going to look at that as the test audience and say, okay, these three people hated this hula hoop. That means the 100,000 people are likely not going to like this hula hoop. So if you want to keep selling hula hoops, it's going to cost you nine bucks a click, 10 bucks a click, who knows? If, you, if one of your hula hoops hits two people that like it and one person that hates it, well, your results are likely going to be slightly better, but still not perfect. Your hope is to find those three people that all love green hula hoops. Facebook's predictive algorithm then would assume everybody's likely going to enjoy this hula hoop. So it's able to find more people because within your test, they found people who liked your hula hoop. So they're able to then locate profiles of a similar nature to those people you've already tested and start delivering this message to more people who have very similar profiles again that will likely also enjoy that, that, that ad, that hula hoop, whatever it is. Um, but once again, since those three people enjoy that hula hoop, your costs to continue running that ad will be considerably lower because of that predictive analysis. Right. You and again, it's last it's, yeah. hula hoops. Right. Sure. I know <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly. silly. We've got all these silly analogies, but it's, it, it works so phenomenally well. There's a lot of ways. I mean, you can identify too as um, playing a game of cards, right. And you know, that you have, four aces in a deck of 52. So how do you gamify Facebook? You play more hands. It's no different than if you're looking down from this airplane, you're looking down at 15 miles and there's hundreds of thousands of potential people. Every time you throw that net out, which is essentially an ad, the wind's gonna take it wherever it wants, right? Inside of that group. So if that's 15 miles, especially in the United States, the wind might take it in front of a group of people that automatically click and the algorithm goes crazy and you get a ton of lead flow, or the wind might take it to a group of people that don't care for it, so they're passing by their newsfeed, and ultimately you start paying a lot for that click and for that lead. So the split test concept that we teach is not about, it doesn't, you guys can do this outside of street text, by the way. Of course, we want you to come to street text, but the split test itself is essentially running the same exact ad as many times you possibly can. So whether you're doing it three, five, or 10, you got to control the destiny of it. So we're not asking you to spend a bunch of money. What we're asking you to do is make educated decisions based on the responses and the immediate response and the feedback you're receiving on that particular ad is going to reveal to you which ads you want to keep and which ads you want to turn off. So gamifying Facebook and their algorithm is essentially by as running as many tests as possible. And as soon as you get the feedback that you like from any given ad, you turn off the other ones. And that could be early as a dollar. And to liken this to more kind of, you know, real time, realistic stuff. Um, imagine this, Facebook assumes you're running a, a, an ad under the housing ad category. They, they already assume they know what type of audience to be delivering it to. So they hit me with your ad. I'm a, I'm a homeowner who might be ready to sell my home. I'm, I'm a great lead. However, I'm having a bad day. 
uh, how I react to that ad in that moment will add to your performance expectations. So even though I would have been a great target, I'm having a bad day and I put an angry face on that ad or I comment something negative because once again, it's just not been a good day for me. Facebook builds off that in, in a negative fashion. So once again, you never know until you test. There's one variable that we can't control and that's who sees your ad. So let's build multiples and make sure we find that, that right initial path. So <clears throat> there's a couple ways to capture leads, right? You can go and, and run Facebook lead ads. And that's where you capture all their information up front. Or you can do it dynamically. And dynamically, a lot of people don't know about, I think, what makes Street Tech so successful. And we're about to show you our ad copy, our imagery, the way we set up ads, and particularly the click-through. Because once someone clicks through, if they feel like you're taking them for a ride or you're trying to capture all their information, a lot of the time, you don't get that contact. Mm -hmm. So I think the art in itself is not just the imagery but the congruency of the experience you're providing from the ad click into the landing pages to capture their information. And that in itself is what I think believe, I, I believe makes Street Techs so successful at what they do. Um, and so this concept becomes so clear when you have a funnel that for every click, you're looking at 10 clicks, well, on average, seven of them become a contact. So if you're getting these 60 to 70% click to contact ratios, ultimately what you're looking for immediately is a low cost per click. And that in itself is going to drive the lead flow your way. And then you have fun because once you start realizing that lead flow is coming your way, you quickly realize that you need to shift mindset into conversion. And that's what we, we really love to talk about because we always feel like we can get lead flow working pretty fast in any given market. Sometimes it's a little bit harder than others. Like you go into Beverly Hills, you might have to compete a little bit more in that marketplace. But once you get it, now you quickly realize it's all about the experience you provide the moment that homeowner arrives in their inbox to meet you. And that's when you need a digital or a, a virtual type of experience in itself. All right, well, before you show it, I have a, um, just to answer one question. I had one person ask this, and I think you saw it too, Marcus. Uh, are we going to be able to do this outside of the company that you work for, which is Street Text? Yes, of course. That's what uh, Marcus and Logan are going to show you how to do it. They'll show you the exact ads so you can run them. Now, Street Text will make it a lot easier. That's the difference. Like I run, I run my own ads outside of Street Text, but I still use Street Text, right? So, uh, look, this can be done outside of the company. Uh, we're here to help you out on both ways. Here's a challenge I have to everybody that wants to do it that way. Street Text has a seven-day trial, okay? There is no one saying you have to sign up with Street Text. The trial is free. So what we're doing is we're allowing you to experience the split test, get our ads and templates. And then now if you, if you think you can do it on your own, go for, go for it, do it. But learn from us because we love to give back. And embrace that this is a community driven tool we have coaching we have resources we have classes and so come to meet the community come check out what we're all about and if you love it you're naturally going to want to be a part of it and if not you didn't lose anything you wouldn't be spending that money yourself on advertising anyway with facebook so why not try it with a, a split test that you know will get you lead flow so yeah. dude what show me the good stuff show i want to see these three different uh ads and let's talk about them because yeah we have a lot of questions on those so here's the idea of like, we bring in the ad manager from Facebook and we connect it into our dashboard. And we just make it easier because we, we call the, the Facebook ad manager, the labyrinth of confusion. It's confusing. <laughs> and, but here we make it as easy as possible. So what we do is we look, we, sh we show you that $5 and 23 cents has been spent. And now in this case, this is, this is gold, okay? This doesn't happen to everybody. This is so it probably happens somewhere to be in the Midwest somewhere, but she's got 26 leads at 20 cents a lead and 11 emails at 48 cents an email. You know, this next split test was even better, 14 cents an email, six cents a lead. <laughs> it's just bizarre when, when, you, when you hit gold, right? Um, but the key is- Marcus, yeah. I'm gonna pause you because there's a really important question. Yes, go. All right, so, and then you can go in here. Uh, somebody brought up command and look, I'm Keller Williams. I love command. This is different. And yeah, you can quote me. This is better than command for uh, leads. A hundred percent. I have command. I use it. I run lead ads through there. These are not lead ads. These are different and they're better. They're, specific. they're way different. They're way different. And we have a lot of people that use street text from command. Yeah. So, so 
So the, the idea is this, you build this ad from this seller template and you guys, when you guys do a trial, we, we run this one, but it shows you that there's 12,593 people actively using it. That 63.4% click to contact ratio. The average cost per lead is two bucks, $18 for a phone number, about $5.95. Again, I just, I'm just showing you that that's an average because people are not properly testing it right. So if you look at Amber, for example, here, she's got three ad split tests and she quickly realized that within $5 of ad spend, she can, she, there's no way she can manage the control the lead flow coming. So she actually paused her ads and we began talking about process so that every single one of these leads gets an experience of Amber. Okay. And so the actual ad that she's running is just a very, you know, generic map of her local area that says, if someone were to buy your home, would you sell it, find its value in the current market? And you get high interaction comments. Hey, for the right price. Yes. You know, given these times that we're in, you can see, I click on the ad itself. It's congruent into the experience they're having. We're not asking for all the information up front. We're asking for an address first and foremost. So it makes it really easy for that person to give that address because that's after all what they're having analyzed. That's the home value they requested. It's really easy for me to go in there and say, you know, especially when I'm on my smartphone, it's powered by Google. So it makes it really easy to give my address. And then now if we get their address, we're going to ask for the next piece of information, their email. So we're not asking for it up front. Now, the, the, the beautiful part about the email is that they have to give permission to, for you to contact them. They have to click on a little box. That moment is gold because the email is submitted and you have an automatic autoresponder shooting out to that lead that introduces yourself to the lead face to face. And so you're tapping into this beautiful model of click to intro face to face. And, and if you, if you know, I mean, we all know the times we're in, the economy's all over the place. The market's all over the place. You don't want to provide an internet best guess. You want to help have a conversation around objectively what's truly happening right now and what is even possible given these unique times. So we're, what we're really, we're leading with empathy and compassion, but we're connection, 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 connection. And we have scripts that help you realize it's not the internet's best guess that you want. It's not about producing a CMA or home value. It's about having a discovery moment with this person. And if you make that the priority, it's beautiful because now you're meeting so many people and you're creating this database of influence and you're going to naturally see the cream rises to the top. There's a lot of people that actually need to sell right now. And there's a lot of people that just need to figure out what's even possible given the time we're in. And you never would have want to give them anything other than that experience. Yeah. And one thing that I wanted to quickly add is that lead gen is psychology. You have to understand psychology to a point in order to be able to, to understand proper lead generation. And with that 63.4% click to contact ratio he was showing there, what that represents is the percentage of which with people have clicked on your ad and have chosen to leave some form of information and understand that you aren't paying per lead on Facebook sponsored ads, you're paying per click. Every time somebody clicks on your ad, you've paid that preset predetermined cost per click, your CPC. Now, if they click on your ad and leave you name, number, email, great. That's, that's, those are great leads, that's what we're looking for. If they leave you no information at all, you've paid the exact same amount for that, that zero information lead as you did for everything. So over a longer period of time, you'll find that only seeking after the, the full leads will become so incredibly costly that it's, it's the ROI just isn't quite there. And if you follow the other formulas and everything that we show, you can take an address only and convince them with all sorts of different ways to get, get, give you their email, give you their phone number. There's an easy solution to a lot of this, whether it's sending mailers. I mean, obviously door knocking is a little tough right now, so we're not recommending you go out and knock on people's doors quite yet, but um, there's a lot of other methods that work. And again, just one, you can wait your turn, Marcus. <laughs> really quickly on this. I raised my hand. I was polite. <laughs> as soon as you make fields mandatory, and this is the first question we get for people who aren't familiar with this kind of lead gen. As soon as you make fields mandatory, like email or, or phone number, essentially what you're doing is the same thing as, and I say this uh, laughingly, but my wife, I wake up in the morning and she says, you know, the laundry needs to get done. Go, you have to go do the laundry today, right? guess who's not doing the laundry today? 
Not a chance. You tell you asked me to do it like that? No, you can't, you can't force this upon me. You can't make me do it. However, if I was asked politely, hey, you know, if you have a chance, maybe go get that laundry done. Not a problem, absolutely, right? But it's the same thing here. You have to put in your email. You have to put in your phone number. What's gonna happen? You're either gonna get nothing or you're gonna start seeing fake information. And I would rather know information than fake information because if I have a legit address and a fake email, fake phone number, what am I doing? I'm not sending mailers. I'm probably not doing a lot of the, the intro stuff because I have an email and a phone number, right? I'm texting, I'm calling, I'm sending, sending emails, but they're not going to the right person because they left me fake information. So I'm just chasing my tail. If they weren't willing to give me that information, I'm not going to make them. I'm going to take whatever they were willing to give me and I'm going to inch those yardsticks closer to what I'm looking for. So if I get an address only, I'm going to have an effective method to try to convince them through a mailer to give me their, their address or their phone number. For, I have a question for either one of you. Um, can can you target a specific farm area that people have, and and how how wide can that farm area be? Canada versus U.S. Canada, yes, you can go as narrow as you want, postal codes, kilometer, etc. U.S. fifteen mile minimum radius is a requirement because of the Housing Discriminatory Act. Got it. And Canada. So one point six kilometer to eighty kilometers. Uh, in the states, it is fifteen to fifty miles. All right, cool. And then uh, Tim's got a good question he asked earlier on, but I'm just getting to it. Uh, if Facebook will let us pick the interests of potential viewers to send our ads to instead of Facebook picking for us, are there are there any that you recommend using over others? I can take that unless you're itching to talk there, Marcus. Well, no, I'll let you. Uh, I have something else to say after that, so go ahead. The way I like to look at this is you want to limit the amount of hurdles in your way. Imagine you're, you're lining up at the 100 yard dash against Usain Bolt. What's going to give you the only chance to win? Well, if he's running the hurdles and you're running a straight 100, right? So every time you, you put a stumbling block, a, a preferred audience selection, you're, you're telling Facebook more and more to what to do. You're limiting their capacity to do what they feel is right. And as of August 26th of 2019, they enacted some radical changes. Once again, the removing of age, race, sex, religion, all that stuff, you can't target that way anymore. But when they did that, they improved the performance of their algorithm. And the reason for this is they said, they started to see people doing kind of back what was happening in 08 with the whole redlining and predatory ads and all that stuff. So they said, people are using this specific targeting mechanism to target people for negative purposes, essentially, right? So we're not gonna let anybody do that anymore. However, we also don't want realtors seeing other realtors ads. We don't want 20 year olds who don't own property seeing home seller ads. They know that. And I always look at it this way, to answer any of these questions, ask yourself, how would this benefit Facebook, right? How would, how would it benefit Facebook to show a realtor and other realtors ads? The likelihood of them getting clicks and the other realtor who's paying for the ad to be happy with that click, you're, you're, it's, it's not in Facebook's best um, interest. So they're not going to do it as a rule. They try very hard not to do that. They're, they're trying this predictive targeting. They're, the algorithm has increased its performance considerably since the removal of these specific interests. All right, good. And then a great question that somebody asked only because remember, um, some people don't understand how it works, how street text works versus you going on in on your own. Um, Uploading client lists, how would that work if we go in with a company like Street Text, right? You can do that on the backside. Um, after you create any ads with us, you can log into your Facebook's ads manager. It's not a lot of fun, but if anybody already is, is doing things like that, they're already familiar with the, you know, the maze that is the, the ads manager. But uh, after you create any of our ads, you can get in and upload your preferred client lists from there. It's not recommended. Um, typically, what we like to do is do it more for retargeting ads, people you've already acquired. And we have mechanism in, in our um, system that allows when you are acquiring leads from our ads to then go ahead and set up retargeting for them. Um, so if we are to set up retargeting ads, we'd be also able to, once again, you'd be able to go into your ads manager and attach that client list from there. Um, certainly possible. All right, guys. And then can, can you, can either of you, if you want to share your screens, can you, go a little deeper into the three different types of ads somebody would run so I can see like the picture and maybe a little bit of the copy and then how you determine uh, more specifically as to how this would work. Let me break it down. Thank you. So it's quite easy to set up an ad with us and we'll actually walk through that process. But 
typically what you do is you, you imagine the address that you're, you're thinking about driving from more, more, most frequently. Because if you think about the address itself, that's where the pin drop is. And you want to get as, as central as possible. So you can see this ad. So if I were to go to build an ad like this, I'll show you exactly how we do it. So I click select on this, this template here. And a lot of people, what they do is they go straight into this map and they're like, what? Why a map first and foremost? Why would you put a map in here? And we're gonna answer that shortly here, but I think everybody knows it. It's because it's so easy and familiar. We all use it and it's not intimidating to click through it. Um, it's, it's something we all know. So when I click my address, I'm essentially going to this address because if I was gonna be driving from this, whether it's my work address or my home address, and I wanna show everybody the 15 miles for most of you in the United States, you got to first and foremost think about your targeting audience because that's going to help you frame in the image you're going to be using. Marcus, really quick, I had to interrupt you. If you can't see anything on your screen, you're probably on your cell phone. Just swipe left or right and you'll be able to see the correct screen. There, go back to you, Marcus. Sorry. Good job. Okay, so here where I'm, I'm from the Bay Area, right? This is the South Bay. There's this little town called Los Gatos in there, which is next to San Jose. And so, you know, aka the Silicon Valley. So 15 miles goes a long way. Now, the beauty about what we do is that you can hack this. You can be near the water, you can be in the mountains. Um, you know, if I were to just really want to focus on down on Santa Cruz and go here, or I can move it outside in the waters and really just concentrate on a part of the coast, right? That's the beauty of knowing where you're going to drop the pin first and foremost. But if I were to tap it into, let's just say, in the middle of San Jose, I'm also targeting Milpitas, Mountain View, Sunnyvale, Los Gatos, Campbell, all these surrounding areas, right? So you first and foremost, before you set up anything in the United States, you want to consider the 15 mile radius that you're in, because that helps to frame in how you're going to set up the ad itself. Okay. Once you've discovered your pin drop or your central address or town or home where you're coming from, you're going to want to quickly look to this image before you set up the ad copy itself. So let's just say I dropped it in San Jose. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click done and I'm going to get my targeting location established by a longitude latitude. Okay. It's just like this. You don't need to know that other than it's, it's essentially drop the pin. It's giving you a 15 mile radius. And then I'm going to go back to the ad that we're building and I'm going to type in San Jose or whatever my starting address was. I'm going to show you essentially you're, you're moving the image and zooming out or in appropriately to exactly replicate that 15 miles that you just saw and create a pin for. I think you might have lost a couple people there, Marcus, but this is being recorded, guys. I'm putting the link on here so that you can watch the replay and slow it down. Well, and we're, we're also going through this a lot faster than we typically would for the, 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 the purpose of saving time, of course. And just know yeah. that when you guys come through, you do get uh, a, a trial, obviously, where you get to work one-on-one -on -one with a coach. We do daily live training sessions where we do exactly this, but we have an entire hour to do just this. So we go through a lot slower, make sure everybody fully understands what's happening. And then um, you do also get the opportunity to break out one-on-one -on -one with one of our coaches yeah. to make sure that things are being set up. And you don't even have to set up a trial. If you ever want to come check out a demo of ours, drop the link in there. It's Calendly forward slash street text. Calendly forward slash street text. You can do it how to become a Facebook lead generation machine in 30 minutes. Um, now, all you got to really know it's, it's quite easy to set up because once you, once you figure out where you're actually launching the ad from, you adjust the image appropriately, okay? And actually, instead of putting in the city and our neighborhood in your description like most people would, they'd be like, oh, if someone wanted to buy your San Jose home, would you sell it? Well, obviously, you're, you're, you're building outside of San Jose. Your audience expands into 15 miles. So what do you do instead? You throw in a little home emoji. Home emoji. Before you add that in, I want to show people something as well. Go back to there for me and type in San Jose in that field. Now, once again, we're talking about there's a lot of psychology behind lead generation. And there, there's, there's essentially three parts to this. First, we got to get them to stop their scroll. So we're using an image that's relevant to basically anybody. We recognize this because we live in this area and it pertains to our safety, our security. There's, it's newsworthy. There's something happening around me. So as they're whipping through Facebook, they're seeing, you know, the happy families carrying boxes. They're seeing images of homes and for sale signs, add, 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 add. So they're just scrolling through. Oh, what's this? They stop, right? Then what, what seems to happen is people find a map 
the first thing that they do is their eyes are drawn to where they live. So if they live in San Jose, great. They're going to look at San Jose. Now, I want everybody to do this really quick. Look in the middle of the map. It may be a bit small, so it's a little bit harder, but just so you can get the idea. Look at San Jose right in the middle of this map. Is there anything that's drawing your eyes upward to the ad copy? Trick question. I already know the answer. No, there's not. Right? So, and once again, also like Marcus is saying, you're only relevant to the people within San Jose. And since we're doing 15 miles, what are the people in, you know, Milpitas or any of those areas? They say, mm, no, that's not me. What's going to happen is your overall relevancy is going down every time somebody outside of San Jose sees this ad and chooses that this isn't for them. So now go ahead and replace it with the home emoji. And now do the same thing. Maybe add three. I like three. Three likes. Three works for me. Um, look at San Jose and immediately as you're looking at San Jose, there's something that's drawing your eyes upward. That's step two, right? So now they're, they're looking at the ad copy and naturally our eyes go from left to right. So you've gone to the middle of the ad, you've gone up to the ad copy. Now you're reading the ad copy, right? Three steps to that. And it's once again, it, it works very, very well. And for anybody who knows me, um, I was highly opposed to the idea of emojis. I don't like emojis as a personal vendetta. Um, on my professional time, you know, eight till four, I love emojis because of how well they work. Um, I had to basically pushed into the, uh, the the usage of emojis, but now it's it's something I recommend to everybody because they work. About freaking time, Logan, damn it. I, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so, well, Logan, I have a quick question here. Let me just interrupt you, question that pertains to this. Yep. Um, do, first, do you have lender, a lender program, I guess? I don't know um, what they mean. We're working on something. Um, my assumption would be like, um, it, there's a, a, a typical partnership, obviously, between agent and lenders. We kind of like to work hand in hand with one another. We don't have brokers or lenders ads or anything created yet, though that will be our next industry. We are moving that direction. So if there are lenders that would like to, to try this out, I would absolutely recommend reaching out to us and we'll start working on what your ads look like. The typical lender agent partnership that we deal with is the lender will oftentimes pay for the platform costs for a particular agent. And then there's a trade-off because the agent can run ads looking for sellers. Anybody looking to refi obviously gets sent to the, the lender. Um, but you can also advertise your own listings and look for buyers. And anytime a new buyer comes in, that's a great benefit to lenders, of course. Right. So we have that partnership happening all the time. All right. Question here. I'm, I'm showing street tech. So people know it's seven days for free. There you go. Um, but there was one question by a not, which is good. And somebody else might be thinking it. This is why I'm asking when the ad pops up and it's a map, isn't that too much verbiage and won't it run the same as just a regular picture? How does that work? I've seen there be some impact in certain areas because too much um, text on an ad can hinder the performance. In fact, it can trigger Facebook not allowing it to go live. So should you be running an ad and it's disapproved and it says there's too much text in your ad, um, typically the solution would be one of two things, zoom the map in more or zoom it out. And you'll be able to see if you're in an area that's got a lot of little cities all close together, you're at a certain zoom level, they're all appearing, go in further or out more and those, those city names disappear, and that will eliminate that, um, that, that problem. Um, we, we see it very, very, very rarely. I would say one in, just throwing a number out, 5,000 ads, probably yeah. more. Actually, um, when, I, when I've run it, uh, I haven't come across that, that challenge, and I think it's because the way the overlay works through Facebook. I think it actually sees it as an image rather than uh, words or text, which is interesting, so. It should. The algorithm does weird things all the time. Um, every so often, it'll pick up an ad that we'll do a, a three ad split test. One will be disapproved for too much text. The other two, which are identical, go through and they work just fine. Right. So right. once again, that's that's another benefit of doing this three ad split test is if all three are disapproved, there's a problem. We need to fix that. If yep. one is disapproved, and the other two are working. Facebook's algorithm just picked up something falsely, turn it off back on. It should go through. So this becomes really fun when you start understanding, truly grasping the concept of split testing, Tristan, because <clears throat> when you're really truly trying to tap into the algorithm, you start realizing that it's not about spending a lot of money with Facebook. It's about running as many ads as you possibly can within the first few hours and just sitting there and having fun. It's like, it's, it's like gambling. You're, you're looking for that first dopamine hit, that first lead. Um, and of course, if you get a lead with the full contact information in your area that you prefer, our system quickly recognizes the contact ad ID and it allows you to just say, I found it, turn off the, all the other ones. And so 
let's say I was running 10 identical ads at nine or ten dollars a day I'm not looking for anybody to spend a hundred dollars in the next 24 hours what I'm looking to see is that you're gonna quickly find within the first dollar or two of any one of those nine or ten ads which ad takes off with the most amount of information and the most amount of clicks and then essentially when you find it you just turn off all the other ones so we conservatively say three ads in 24 hours just to help people understand this concept but once you actually grasp it you can literally tap into facebook just by knowing this can be done to any type of ad that you're running whether it's a listing ad a buyer ad seller ad custom ad i did it with my own home on a listing ad and i tapped into a dollar phone number doing the same thing so you just don't want to run one ad at a time because you're subject to that audience. Dude. Okay. So lots of questions coming in now. So I'm going to try to get them. I don't know why all the questions come in towards the end, but it's the same in every webinar. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. Kind of like a speed round um, because we still have almost 400 people um, at our height. We have like somewhere around low 400s. Okay. Really quick. Go. What's the budget for each ad? Totally up to you. We identified as $9 a day being the best starting ground. That's based on North America wide stats that there's, there's the, the risk of not spending enough on your ads and not being able to get enough clicks in a day and enough leads in a day. But there's also the ability to spend too much on your ads. And if you're in an area where Facebook is struggling to reach enough of an audience, let's say you've set it at 20 bucks a day and you're spending, you know, seven bucks a day currently from what Facebook's able to do, Facebook will start to increase your cost per click subtly because they're not able to necessarily just immediately reach more people, but they see that you have more budget available. They'll start charging you slightly more. It's kind of sneaky. So yeah. we've identified $9 a day just to be that perfect uh, area. But again, if you're in a place like Western Michigan, where you're, um, you know, your, your median price is $275,000 compared to where we are, where you guys are, where yeah. median price is closer to a million, right? Your cost to acquire leads is going to be different. And so Correct. we've set up a, a warning system within our dashboard to allow you to set potential ROI. How much is a deal worth to me in this area? And our system will warn you if your cost per, per lead or cost per email gets over a certain amount preset based on potential ROI in your area. Yeah. yeah. So Roger has a really good point here. Roger, uh, he's listening in. Roger, thanks for being on again, dude. I think you've been on with us the whole morning. Uh, Roger saying nine dollars times three equals twenty seven. Uh, that's how it would be if if you're in one of the smaller areas. If I'm running it in L.A., and I mean it doesn't get much bigger than L.A. except maybe New York, right? So I would do twenty dollars per ad for the first twenty four hours, right? And then see which one's going to do better. Oh, then oh, no, you could do it. You could do it nine too. I do it all the time in LA and Santa Monica and all those areas. All right. So then go to Marcus. He's on Facebook. <laughs> Message him. And, uh, but yes, you do split test all three at the same and it's time. Not, right? it's, so for Rogers, not, it's not actually having to spend 27. We just do that conservatively so you can learn. Once you start understanding how to do this, I can, if I were doing LA or Santa Monica, I'd probably run five to 10 of those. And then as soon as they start giving me feedback, which could be in the first dollar or two of those ads being spent, I can start eliminating. And then, cause I, I'm going to constantly be looking for where my feedback is. So if I've spent $2, and I've already got a lead generated with a phone number, why would I keep the other ones on? I've already found what I was looking for. Facebook already had found it for me. On the opposite side, if I've spent $5 of that $10 ad budget and I have nothing, no clicks, no submissions, why would I keep it on? I'll turn it off. Awesome. So it's understanding how to interpret. And that's why you want to be with, with the community and a coach initially to learn how to do this properly. It's, this is the 10,000 foot view, guys. Yeah, that's true. Right? Right. You know, you to figure this out on your own. Let me go to the next one. Roger Seattle. Yeah, go ahead and try it at nine bucks. Uh, Sasha says, says, will this ad lead to a landing page to give them a market value? Go through that really quick. No. So we don't yes and no. Well, it can be. It depends on what you're using, right? We have we have people that use Homebot, uh, Cloud CMA, and so forth. But no, in general, we don't believe in it because we believe you give away all your leverage if it goes straight to a CMA. The whole point of this is to create a conversation and to get in front of them and to communicate why you don't want to give the internet's best guess right now. Um, and so I think that's the essential element of it is if you, you get an email, you get an opportunity to get face-to-face, -face, especially when you're leveraging something like BombBomb embedded in the auto email going out. There's a whole nother like 
part two, part three part to this two, the follow up. Which, that follow up is insane on this, but that could really take us another few hours. So Ron says, are all three ads identical except for radius? They're all everything. Radius different. is the same. The yeah. Perfect. And just Perfect. so you guys know, you guys can also run different ads as well. And you know, they can have different pictures and different radiuses. That's, that's how I do it. This is how they decide to do it. And it works really well. So this is just an example. Look, beautiful. Look, the way that I would do this, Tristan, is let's say, for instance, you want to target, you know, three different areas. The way yeah. I would probably do it is start with my most preferred, do three identical ads for that area, pick the winner. And then I've got my anchor ad for, say, Malibu. Now I want to find an, uh, an ad that's going to work in my other area. I would do the same thing. I've already got one ad that's killing it in Malibu. Great. Now I'm going to start my three ad split test in my other area. Pick the one best one, lock that in, move down the road and, and do the same thing again. In the end, if you want to run three ads long term, absolutely do it. But I like to start, figure out which one is most appropriate for this area, then do the same split test you know, do it, do something slightly different here. That's typically the way I would do it. And then in regard to that other question, um, this ad that we're talking about does lead them to a landing page, just so there's no confusion there. However, it does not send an automatic CMA because I think you're going to lose all your leverage. Um, but we also have lead ads. We've got customizable lead ads. We've got, I run a custom ads class every Tuesday where all of our users who want to join can come. We, we, we have different examples of, of what we're currently building, what we suggest. And if we have feedback from the crowd, Hey, I'd love to run an investment ad or one that's seeking this kind of individual. Great. We build it together right there. And then as we're starting to see that one particular ad that's working best for most people, then we have the ability to template it so that other people can just simply come in and with three clicks of a button, be running this new ad that we've just come up with as a community. Logan or Marcus, which one of you had that screen on that was showing the ads? I'd like you to show how you determine which ad you end up going with, just to show me the cost per lead. Sure. So when I'm in here, we have the ad section. And it's hard to tell you in a, in a scenario like this, because if you look at, uh, let's like this person, Amber, um, she's got a pretty good lead flow on almost any ad she runs. You know, 18 cents a click, 14 cents a click, 26 cents a click, uh, four, <laughs> four cents. So essentially you're gonna go with the ad that's giving you the best cost per email, generally speaking, because that's where we constitute the ability to get the, the conversation started. Um, but also you're gonna recognize that quickly that as these contacts come in, you're, you're gonna look at the ad ID associated to that contact. So with Beth Williams, there's the ad ID ending with 303. So if I'm getting a lot of phone number submissions from an area that I really like, full mm -hmm. contact submissions with yeah. leads that, let's say, are, are looking to sell pretty fast here, I'm naturally mm -hmm. going to want to keep that ad on even if I'm, I'm spending a little bit more for it because it's contact information that I can work with that I like. It's right next to, it's right next to me. It's not out of area. Um, and I can call, pick up the phone and make the call. Oh, oh you, muted, you muted yourself. No. Sorry, we had over... Over 1,200 people register for this. So what we're going to do is Marcus, Logan, their team, they're going to email out a uh, quick information so you guys have it in your email, just in case you do guys want to, you want to test out the trial, you didn't do it on the chat. Um, Marcus, Logan, I'm going to email that list over to you probably in the next 30 minutes. And then you guys can either send out that email later today or tomorrow, just with any information you want, just so people can take a look. If you guys have anything to compare like the little ads, that would be sick because I'd love to get an email like that to show me the ads or, or you guys know what the hell to do. So uh, anything you guys want to leave us with here? It's, it's a free trial. I mean, you guys are going to try to do this yourself anyways. Why not just come and get an experience and a coach and learn how to do it yourself? So if you love it, you join the community. If you don't, you've learned something from it. Um, you've learned how to create split tests for yourself, for your own marketing, for your own advertising and lead generation. Um, and I think you'll quickly find that everybody can be successful. Um, but it's not about lead generation as much as that's putting together the solution. Today is all about lead generation, but you'll quickly want to realize that it's all about the brand, your brand, pulling in your personality into the AIs, into the video emails into the text message component and working with a community that can help you um, actually learn how to do that, do that properly. Cause it's not scripts. It's about being you and it's about connection. It's about winning friends and influencing people. And some people need a little bit of help to do that.
That sounds like a book, Winning Friends and Influencing People. <laughs> I have uh, never heard of it before. <laughs> all right, all right. The way that I... The way that I, I like to leave this is, is the understanding of, you know, when I was selling real estate myself, you understand how many hats you're already wearing. I have to be on top of the market, not only the market in one neighborhood, in all the neighborhoods I work, my, all the cities I work. I have to be on top of so many different things that you have such a little threshold left for marketing. And it's not just marketing. It's also all the follow-up. There's so much going on and, and street text is is more than just lead generation like marcus is saying we're a collaborative community of like-minded individuals right we're a bunch of people who you know the, the coaches we don't sell real estate anymore so we have the ability to essentially sit in our cozy little offices and research what's happening with the facebook algorithm because what's happening today may be different from what happens tomorrow and beyond so we're already forecasting what's likely going to happen and have all these different integrations and all these suggestions we get together once per week on wednesdays to share with our whole um, community what are people doing to convert more leads there's always an, a fresh topic but it's 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 so important for us to be able to pull everybody together and and right the ship and move in, in a similar direction. And once again, if something's shifting in the Facebook algorithm for one individual to go and try to figure it out themselves, that's a daunting task to be able to come to a company that this is what we do and be able to understand, okay, that's why my, my ad that I just ran isn't working. That ad worked last week. Why isn't it working today? Well, because the, 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 the methodology has shifted slightly. The algorithm is changing. It's ever changing and evolving. So we don't do things one at a time. Right. We, we look at ads thousands at a time and pick up on trends much quicker and then identify what those trends are to individuals. And even if you're not running all of your ads with street text, not a problem. You can take the things that we teach and that you learn and apply it to every other lead source that you're, you're, you're using. Right. So I think that's the important thing is to not look at street text just as lead gen, but as that, that you're not on an island. You have a community of individuals that you get to come and share ideas with. We have our insider group. We have a lot of cool places and, I would say a, a good portion of our clients are also on LCA, which it's that same idea. It's, it, that's exactly what we're trying to do as well is, is have this, this, this group of individuals. And, you know, we see it all the time, you know, somebody comments in LCA, how many comments below it, <laughs> right? It's and yeah. almost always, they're very helpful and positive, <laughs> which is both, you know, to, to well, stay you know part what? of our. That goes, that goes a lot to say here as to how you guys, um, meet those expectations, right? Which is, you guys are showing people how to follow up, showing what tools to use, how to implement, uh, how to decide what ads to use. You're continually helping us understand how to approach this so that you don't leave it just up to us to kind of figure out and fail and be like, oh, well, that was stupid, right? So there's a big difference. And, and I love how you guys go in and help out. It makes the biggest difference. Oh man, I get so frustrated when I can't connect with somebody that's running an ad that's improper and they're just wasting money. I love to help people find that algorithm because when they do, <laughs> they want to talk to you because they're like, oh my gosh, lead flow. What do I do? Who do I talk to? How do I get them this information? And what's the best practice? What's a script? Da, 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 right? And so you first use this just to draw them in because once they start getting leads generated, they quickly find that it's all about the experience you provide and how to get that information and conversation started. So, um, it, but that's the same thing for any lead you generate, whether it's a buyer, seller, or listing, you need to really focus on the process. Sometimes we're all focused too much on the lead generation and not the process itself and working smarter, not harder. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I just want to double down on that really quick. I know we're in, getting to the end of this, but the one thing that every single agent is told day one from their broker, or, or three things, I guess they're told is the way I like to put it. What is, do you think? For me, it was speed to lead, speed to lead, and speed to lead. Right, because you know, 10, 15 years ago, if you got an immediate response from an ad that you clicked on, it was, wow, they got back to me so quick. That's yeah. no longer very impactful because everybody has bots and automations now. So the most important thing in my opinion, speed to lead is still important. Don't, don't get me wrong here. Speed to lead is incredibly important, but even more so important is quality of message. If that first message isn't quality, you're pushing people further away. If I click on an ad looking for my home value, you send a very flat email or text message, you know, I'm not opening your second or any subsequent messages because you didn't, you didn't do anything for me. So the first thing we suggest, of course, and this is a topic for a totally different conversation, of course, but this is one of the things that, that as street techs, we're firm believers in it's systems like bomb bomb, the ability to put yourself, your voice, your personality, your brand 
in a, a personable package. So that first message gets delivered to them right away, yes. But when they open it up, there's a real person talking to them. It's so hey, this is Marcus from Remax Clodo. Thank you so much for your Facebook home valuation request. I'll be working on it shortly. That's it. Got it. 10 seconds or less. Boom. We're done. Face to face. Guys, let's do a part two to this uh, continuation of, uh, well, you know, we had a ton of people on this one. So uh, we'll call this one part one, which is creating the ads, deciding which ones to go to, kind of narrowing it down. And now part two to this would be strictly the follow up. How you guys use BombBomb, um, how you guys use HomeBot, how you go into showing part of how your AI works and then the back end and those videos that I love that you guys do with CMAs and all that. I think that's, uh, that's what we should get into part two. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Well, and, and that's a big one, address only. If you're using HomeBot, we get that all the time. How can I send HomeBot if I don't get an email address? Stay tuned. I've got a really good strategy for that. I'll have a script ready to go for our next one. I'll be able Love to it. get everybody that, that mailer. Thanks, guys. And remember, sign up for streettext.com, streettext.com. That's a seven-day free trial. And everyone who was on this will get an email from them either later today or tomorrow sometime. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you all. Thanks.